candle mass from Stockholm, Sweden, was originally formed as Nemesis in 1982, with Leif Edling on bass and vocals, guitarists Anders Wallen and Christian Webered, and drummer Anders Walterson. After a couple years playing local shows, they'd record and release an EP in 1984, titled The Day of Retribution. A million souls so bad and damn Alive but not so well And Messiah raised his hand And sent him down to the Day of Retribution EP immediately evokes a dark, foreboding atmosphere with Leif's haunting vocals and a slow, intense build into a heavy, doomy riff. You slide your palm and held your hand It's watching your Damnation and death the opening track in particular, Black Messiah, is super gripping and hands down my favorite track off the EP with a killer, understated chorus. It's a very raw production, which actually adds to the overall aesthetic, and there's definitely a Black Sabbath vibe, but without the bluesy touches. There's an inherent sluggishness to the music, especially compared to the burgeoning thrash and speed metal scenes of the time. But the Day of Retribution is never boring. The riffs are still headbangers, and the solos provide a nice counterbalance to the slower tempos. Not long after releasing a solid EP that laid the groundwork for what was to come, Nemesis would be forced to change their name due to the threat of legal action by a Swedish electronics store chain also called Nemesis. First of all, I would say that Nemesis is a terrible name for a chain of electronics stores. But also, considering there are just over 50 bands called Nemesis on Metal Archives, it seems like a good idea regardless. Nemesis would essentially break up at this point, and with the much cooler name of Candlemass, Leif would be joined by drummer Matt Ekstrom to record a four-track demo along with Christian Webered on guitar. As a fan of the Manila Road album, Open the Gates, Leif sent the Candlemass demo to Paris-based label Black Dragon Records, who were interested but requested more material. And so, with Mappy Bjorkman on as second guitarist, they'd record two additional demo tracks and get signed to a one-record deal with Black Dragon. With Leif on bass, Matt's on drums, and Mappy on guitar, they still needed a dedicated singer. But with no candidates available, Matt's got his friend Johan Lanquist to fill in, although he had no intention of staying on full-time. But with a vocalist in place, plus Klaus Bergwall filling in as lead guitarist, this lineup would record the first Candlemass album, Epicus Dumicus Metallicus, in 1986. I'm sitting here alone in darkness waiting to be free Lonely and forlorn 
considered by many to be the first proper doom metal album, Epicus Doomicus Metallicus starts off with Solitude, an excellent track steeped in misery, encroaching darkness, and a heavy-ass riff. the chorus, inspired by the opening of Buried Alive by Venom, is a grim eulogy, dredging up more depressing imagery. While Solitude sets the overall tone perfectly, I love the epicness of track two, Demon's Gate, even more. Johan's somber vocals are an excellent fit for the music, bringing plenty of power and emotion. Plus, the solos here are fantastic, with impressive licks that are again the perfect complement to the heavy, depressive riffs. But all six tracks on here are outstanding, with a warm, crunchy guitar tone that gives the otherwise dark music a pleasant 70s sound quality. Epicus Dumicus Metallicus isn't flawless, and Candlemass was still technically half a band, the end result is fantastic, despite the obstacles. and structure of the songwriting, along with the balance of slow yet powerful music, all combine to create effective tracks that are highly emotional in an entirely different way than what many metal bands of 1986 were going for. while it's become a classic since and went on to set the standard for epic doom metal, the first Candlemass album did not do well initially. We didn't know what we were doing, and our mates in Uplands Vesby hated our music. Kiss, UFO, Thin Lizzy were in fashion. But our music was based on bands like Black Sabbath, Trouble, Angel Witch, Venom, Anvil, Accept, Pentagram, Motorhead and Iron Maiden. We were metalheads and wanted our music to be slow, hard and heavy. Due to low 
album sales, Candlemass was not re-signed by Black Dragon. Also, Matt's Ekstrom would leave due to work commitments and be replaced by Jan Lind, with Lars Johansson also coming on as a full-time lead guitarist. Plus, they'd finally nailed down a full-time vocalist in 19-year-old Messiah Markelin. Candlemass would record a demo with Messiah, which would get them signed to a UK-based label called Axis Records, and the chance to record their second album, Nightfall. Once again, the tone is perfect from the very beginning, and Messiah makes an instant impression with his powerful vocals. I bind unto myself. Overall, Nightfall is excellent and continues to build on the sound from the debut album with slow yet massive riffs and groovy doom-filled melodies. Along with his impressive vocals, Messiah also had a lot to do with the marketing and presentation of the album, suggesting they use the Thomas Cole painting, Old Age, for the cover, and prompting Leif to come up with a different title rather than the original, Gothic Stone. Messiah would also suggest the cover of Chopin's Funeral March, which is an excellent touch. While they're not together on the album, the Funeral March would open the first Candlemass music video for the epic track, Bewitched. get to see the band, but we're also introduced to Messiah's trademark monk outfit as he goes around bewitching people. You are bewitched. You are bewitched. He takes the bewitched metalheads to a snowy clearing in the woods and gets them all lined up exactly how he wants them before leading them all in a group doom dance. I love everything about this song and this video from the beautiful scenery to the homemade VHS quality, which once again actually adds to the creepy atmosphere. Whoa, you are bewitched. But really, Bewitched is a standout track on a standout album that maintains its epicness and melancholic mood from beginning to end. However, while that sense of foreboding can be felt throughout the album, it also makes the up-tempo moments stand out even more. And to 
again, Messiah's vocals are an excellent fit for the Candlemas aesthetic. Plus, the solos continue to be awesome, with speedier, classy playing by Mappy and Lars. While Nightfall was a commercial success and got Candlemass more attention than Epicus Dumicus Metallicus, their appearance at the 1988 Dynamo Open Air Festival would launch them onto the international scene. Candlemass would start work on their third album to capitalize on Nightfall, but the mixing would end up being rushed in order to have it out in time for a tour with Motorhead. However, Ancient Dreams, released in late 1988, would end up being another pretty great record. And it kicks off with possibly the best song off the album, Mirror Mirror. It's heavy as hell, and the chorus is still super catchy. probably goes without saying that the whole album is packed with excellent solos too, but I really dig the one here with its vintage vibe. approach of Ancient Dreams is fairly similar to Nightfall and uses the Thomas Cole painting Youth, also from the Voyage of Life series, as a cover. And the music is also drenched in doom-laden melodies and sludgy riffs. But I have to give the edge to Nightfall personally, even though Ancient Dreams is still great, with some awesome tracks and truly well-crafted solos. Plus, while I'm a big horror fan, I also appreciate that Candlemass doesn't rely on gory images or overly graphic lyrics to get attention, but instead creates a dark atmosphere based entirely on their music, Messiah's vocals, and the gothic aesthetic, which is on full display throughout this album, further solidifying what had come to be known as doom metal.
Doom Metal is just, maybe just a Trendy. just a good name, you know. To yeah. to I mean, people always want to categorize you, and maybe it's a good name. Scandalous is not a satanic band or a religious band. It's just basically stories about good and evil. some things that don't work quite as well for me here, like Incarnation of Evil, which is an updated version of Black Messiah. A million souls so lost and damned, alive but not so well. And the devil raised his hand and sent the Don't get me wrong, it's super heavy and Messiah does a tremendous job with it, but I personally prefer the Nemesis version with that original chorus to this one. favorite song from the Nemesis album, so I was begging, please, can we do that one? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> if we took away both Incarnation of Evil and Episto 81, it's a decent record, because those two songs are shit on this record. I can't listen to it today. I think both Incarnation of Evil and Episto number 81 is really below Canada's standard. But even so, Ancient Dreams is still a really solid follow-up to Nightfall, with several classic tracks. For their fourth album, Candlemass not only wanted to rectify the mixing issues from Ancient Dreams, but also to stretch themselves creatively, which ironically meant reworking some older material for 1989's Tales of Creation. Now on Music for Nations, which had essentially absorbed Axis in 1988, Tales of Creation tells the story of the origins of life, based on material Leif had come up with for their 1985 demo. And rather than use another Thomas Cole Voyage of Life painting for the album cover, Candlemass decided on The Creation of Light by Gustav Doré, which Leif had found in his old family Bible. I like this album a lot overall, although it's still a bit uneven. On one hand, there are some absolutely amazing tracks on here, like Dark Reflections. Or Through the Infinitive Halls of Death, with its aggressive riff and Messiah's soaring vocals. I know that my life is Very soon I lose my breath. A place of fire is slow descending. It's the question of the night. And then there's the highlight on the album for me, the awesome instrumental, Into the Unfathomed Tower.
obviously it's more of a power metal track than doom metal, but it's badass either way. But then there are also a couple of short but emotionless spoken word tracks on here, and I'm not crazy about the re-recording of Under the Oak either, compared to the version on Epicus. <laughs> issues aside, it's still a really easy album to listen to for the most part, even if it doesn't necessarily have major classics like previous Candlemas releases. After putting out a well-received live album in 1990, Candlemas would start work on their fifth album, but apparently tensions had been growing between Leif and Messiah since the Tales of Creation tour, and things finally came to a head while recording ultimately resulting in Messiah quitting the band. He'd be replaced by fellow Swedish vocalist Thomas Wickstrom to record the album, titled Chapter 6, as it was their sixth release if you count Candlemas Live. Two years before, we felt pretty stuck in a corner somewhere. We didn't know where to go, we didn't know what to do with our music, and we, we felt pretty frustrated. Now things uh, seem to, I mean, to be solved pretty smoothly, because yeah. Thomas here is a new singer, fantastic voice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> stuff is more groovy, more, uh, I wouldn't use that word, but maybe more mature. So um, it is a change, and I think uh, all old Swedish, uh, not Swedish, but uh, the old Canmas fans will still like the music, but I think uh, we can uh, reach out to a more wider audience, I think, with this new material. <laughs> Chapter 6 does have a noticeably different approach to it, upping the speed and the attitude to go in more of a power doom direction. And Thomas is a good enough fit for the music, although he's also quite a change from Messiah. The But even so, this album is still really solid overall. They kind of lose some of their uniqueness with the shift in style to me, but the heaviness is still there, along with some nice Doom riffs. Black Eyes, possibly my favorite track off the album, showcases the blend of styles particularly well, starting off with a groovy doom riff. and then moving into a badass power metal section for the chorus. I 
also like the album opener, The Dying Illusion, which got a bizarre music video in which we're introduced to a milfy succubus who frequents a fancy local restaurant for her victims. Then we meet sad Enrique Iglesias, who's arguing with his wife at the bar. The cougar lady sees this and calls him over to the smoking section, where she immediately seduces him, although he's still pretty conflicted about it. They leave the bar with the dude somehow wearing a totally different shirt and they get into the lady's private limo. The guy's wife comes out to see him leaving with the lady, but it's too late. He hooks up with her in a softcore Cinemax style sex scene and then she kisses his eyes, which apparently blinds him somehow. He stumbles around aimlessly in a black toga while she returns to the bar to pick up another unsuspecting horny dude. After the disappointing sales for Chapter 6, Candlemass would officially disband and Leif would form a new group called Abstract Algebra. What happened to Candlemass? Nothing really happened. That, that, that's the thing about it. Um, we toured, uh, we toured, and we toured. Uh, not much more happened. We released albums, but I think you need to grow, actually, as a band. I, th I don't think there's any point in just continuing, continuing, to, and continue to do, to do albums and tour. I thought it was time to delete the band and, uh, you know, stop when it was time. <laughs> so. Uh, I bumped into some friends here and we started abstract, you know, as a fun thing and uh, the thing, the things led to each other and uh, we just kept on going. They put out a self-titled album in 1995, but Leif would run out of money recording the second, leaving him on the edge of bankruptcy. However, Music for Nations would offer to sign the band and re-record the album but they had to do it as Candlemass, not Abstract Algebra. Both Mappy Bjorkman and Lars Johansson declined to return to Candlemass, and Abstract Algebra singer Mats Levin had been snatched up by Yngwie Malmsteen. So guitarists Michael Amott of Arch Enemy and Patrick Instet would come on, along with vocalist Bjorn Flodkvist, drummer J. Joe Perkovich, and keyboardist Carl Westholm, to record the sixth Candlemass album, Dactylus Glomorata. <music> Named after a type of grass that Leif is allergic to, Dactylus Glomorata is a much bigger departure from the original Candlemass sound than Chapter 6. It's not absolutely terrible or anything, but it's very 1998 and leans into a lot of the less appealing aspects of that period, so it ends up less doom metal and more experimental, industrial, progressive garage rock. There are bits here and there that I like, but there's not a lot overall I'd be eager to regularly revisit. Leif did write some new tracks for Dactylus Glomorata though, I assume to make it sound a bit more like Candlemass. 
of the three, Carthago seems to come the closest. But even that one gets bogged down in spacey ambience, and overall, Dactylus Glomerata is a pretty uneventful album. They'd continue on with this sort of style for their next album as well, 1999's From the Thirteenth Sun. The lineup would essentially stay the same, except with Matt's Stahl replacing Michael Amott on guitar, while the music delves even more into quasi-experimental compositions with heavy doses of Black Sabbath. But it doesn't really do anything interesting with it in my opinion. A lot of the tracks kind of meander into jammier bits with vague shades of Hawkwind or Tool, but it still doesn't do much to liven things up. There are some very positive reviews out there of this one, so maybe I'm missing something. But unfortunately, nothing really stands out for me here. This lineup of Candlemass would dissolve not long after this, with Leif going off to form a band called Crooks, also with vocalist Matt's Levin. However, the Nightfall lineup would get back together in 2002 to promote remasters of the classic 80s Candlemass albums. After the reunion, there were brief discussions about recording a new Candlemass album, but they apparently didn't get very far. I was not that interested, to be perfectly honest. We spoke about it and, uh, you know, people had pretty uh, varied opinions about how to make an album. So to me it was not a big deal really to say, let's forget about it, because we never said we would we were gonna do an album anyway. However, Leif was inspired to write new Candlemass material after spending time touring with his old band. And fortunately, Mappy Bjorkman's wedding would give everyone a chance to smooth things over in person. We were all at the wedding, uh, we eating good food, dancing, drinking, having fun, and everybody noticed that there is no bad vibe, there is no I don't like you, you don't like me, can never has been in this band. It was just all these question marks that we had to solve. Somewhere around this time, Leif would play his new tracks for Mappy, who thought they sounded perfect for Candlemass. Leif agreed, and when Messiah heard that they were working on new Candlemass material, he decided to do whatever it took to make the album happen with the classic lineup. I said, I really have to sing on this new Canvas album if it's a Canvas album, and I really want to. And we must do anything we can to, all the compromises we can to make, make, be able to make this. I always had a, a, the wrong attitude in the past. It was always my way or the highway. You know, if I didn't like something, I just said no, and we couldn't do it and it doesn't really work well in that band. It only took me 20 years to realize that. <laughs> so with the commitment to seeing the project through this time, the entire Nightfall lineup would record 2005's self-titled album, Candlemass. Released on Nuclear Blast Records, this album is freaking great. 
Whether it was the sheer determination to complete the project or just this specific combination of guys, this turned out to be pretty much everything you'd want from a Candlemas album in 2005. Like Black Dwarf, which starts out with a heavy riff, followed by a great catchy chorus. Of course, you can hear elements from from Epicus and Nightfall and Tales and stuff on this album, so I, I think it pretty much uh, contains the essence of Canvas on this record, because if you are a diehard Nightfall or Epicus fan, I think you will, you know, like this record too. This is pretty much a statement that uh, this is Canvas and uh, we're back with a motherfucker of an album. This album really feels like a true successor to Tales of Creation, with dark yet powerful songwriting and another excellent performance from Messiah. But while his return definitely helps with the Candlemas sound, the riffs on here also bring authentic Doom elements with more feeling and life to them than on either Dactylus Glomerata or From the Thirteenth Sun. Guitar playing is right up there with those early albums too. With the classic best known lineup back together, the 2005 Candlemas album, which almost didn't happen, was a big hit, even winning a Swedish Grammy. The recording went relatively smoothly, the live shows were full of rabid fans, and things generally seemed to be going well for Candlemas once again. I live underground, born in the tank. Now we're, you know, stronger than ever, so I can't really see any of the guys leaving because we are really, really proud of the band right now and proud of what we did during the reunion tour. We are very proud of this album, so I cannot see any of the guys leave. I'm sure we're going to do, a, you know, another album with the same lineup. Unfortunately, though, that would end up not happening, and by October of 2006, Messiah was out of the band again, this time for good. He'd be replaced by Texan vocalist Robert Lowe from the band Solitude Eternus, after Robert's girlfriend sent Leif some samples. And with Robert on board, Candlemas would record their ninth album, King of the Grey Islands. This one definitely focuses on a dark Doom vibe, perhaps even more so than the self-titled album, 
with slow, heavy riffs and Robert's raw, smoky vocals giving the music a different edge from previous releases. This is the Mark III version of Canon Mass. I mean, the first album was the Mark I, like with Deep Purple, and then we had the classic era with, with, with Miss Amar Carlin. That was our Mark II era. Now it's a fucking Mark III era with, with Robert. Actually, it's more like Mark VI at this point, but regardless, this does feel like a new beginning for the band, with a very focused sound that results in some pretty great tracks that still nail that dark yet powerful atmosphere. It doesn't quite reach the level of Nightfall or Epicus for me, but there's still a lot to like here. We even get a Lay Fedling bass solo on the album Closer to add to the epic doom atmosphere. And it feels like Lars's solos are a bit shorter on this album, but they're still excellent as always. Robert seemed to settle in fairly quickly with Candlemass, and with his laid-back attitude, there was also less stress for the band to deal with. It's so easy to work with this guy. It's like, you know, with Messiah, there's always a problem. There's always a big black cloud hanging over us. But with Robert, it's like, uh, so where's the problem? So uh, it's so easy. <laughs> so you think that, shit, this should be a problem somewhere, but it ain't. Robert would record two more albums with Candlemass, starting with Death Magic Doom in 2009. It goes in a direction fairly similar to that of King of the Grey Islands, and it's not bad, but I'd have to say that it's my least favorite of the Robert Lowe albums. was originally called Hammer of Doom, but was apparently changed because the Hammer of Doom Music Festival also started that year, although I failed to see the conflict. Anyway, Death Magic Doom does deliver on the typical immense heavy sound you'd expect from Candlemass, but this one feels kind of light on the catchy melodies for me, although it's certainly not devoid of them. Overall, it's a collection of great sounding songs with some really nice moments. 
but at the end of the day, I can't say it grabbed me in the same way that King of the Grey Islands did, although it may work a little better for you. This was followed by the final Candlemas album with Robert Lowe, Psalms for the Dead in 2012. Released on Napalm Records, this is another really solid album that brings back more power and melody. There's still the dark, doomy side, of course, but this one weaves in more uplifting melodic bits, showcased perfectly in the album opener. And the Hammond organ voiced keyboards by Carl Westholm are prominent throughout the album, giving it a cool 70s quality as well. She offers me cricket, she offers me tea, in the court of her enchanted palace. Ask me if I want to stay, sing with the trolls on the face, swim in her immoral play, dancing in the temple of the Mad Queen. Plus, the Lars Johansson solos on here are absolutely killer. Psalms for the Dead is right up there with the 2005 album for me, but it feels a bit more creative than some other 21st century Candlemas albums, incorporating a few different ideas that actually work really well together. For reasons that are still kind of vague, this album was promoted from the beginning as the last Candlemas album, and Leif saw the theme of Psalms for the Dead, in a sense, as a goodbye to the fans. We were out of the contract with, with Nuclear Blast anyway. We had no obligations, uh, nothing. But we have said to ourselves that, okay, maybe it would be nice to make one last album. Um, it's a pretty good way to say goodbye in a way, this album. So Robert Lowe would leave the band apparently just before Psalms was released, but Candlemas would continue to tour with Matt's Levin on as vocalist, 
Mads doesn't appear on any studio albums, but he did record two EPs with Candlemass. One to celebrate the 30th anniversary of Epicus Dumicus Metallicus in 2016, and one in 2018 to coincide with an online Candlemass-themed slot machine game. However, four months after the release of the House of Doom EP, Candlemass would announce the departure of Matt's Levin. They'd also announce his replacement, Johan Lanquist, who was returning as vocalist for a new full-length album, which would be the band's 12th, 2019's The Door to Doom. Good morning, demon majesty. Shine like the diamond you are. One of the three. First of all, Johan sounds pretty good here, although his voice is also quite different now from how it sounded on Epicus, and ends up going in more of a Robert Lowe direction than Messiah Markelin. Musically, this one feels similar to Death Magic Doom to me, with a focus on a dark, morose kind of vibe, which Candlemass is great at, obviously, and it is an enjoyably heavy album to listen to overall. But most of it ends up being pretty straightforward for my taste, and pulls back on the more melodic elements. While I can't say it blew me away, the Door to Doom is definitely heavy and packed with slow, dark riffs, like on a Storalus, the Great Octopus. This one actually got a music video, but it's age restricted and I'm not sure if I'd be able to show most of it anyway. So I'll just say that if you like squids and titties, you'll want to check it out. But there is some stuff that stood out to me on here too, like Bridge of the Blind, a proper acoustic ballad. And the album Closer, The Omega Circle, also has a pretty cool chorus. In the midnight hour, and the souls devour, we go into the mall. Oh, your heart is aching, and you feel forsaken, we go to Black Mall. But my absolute favorite part of the whole album is the awesome outro. I'm not sure if it's considered a part of the Omega Circle or not, but it's badass, and I would have loved to get a whole track built around it. The Door to Doom was followed by the most recent Candlemass album, Sweet Evil Sun, in 2022. I always... While I think The Door to Doom works pretty well overall, this one just fell kind of flat to me, unfortunately. Although it's likely that the title track will get stuck in your head at least for a little bit. Sweet, sweet. Sweet Evil 
Beautiful Sun is about hope, striving, adoration, and failure. It's about all the personal battles that you have, but also the never-ending decay of humanity. The record took over a year to make, and there's not a bad track on it. It's doom, it's metal, it's the essence of Candlemass put into one album. Personally, not a lot grabbed me here, and a lot of the tracks felt twice as long as they were. But the biggest issue for me is some overly phlegmy vocals, which frankly, I could only listen to for so long. Young man, sinner, woman! And to be fair, it's not the whole album, but was enough to bug me. Even that aside though, I didn't find the choruses particularly engaging either. But even if that most recent album didn't do much for me, I'm still a huge fan of Candlemass and can't wait to see what they do next. For homework, the top tier albums I think most fans agree on are Epicus Dumicus Metallicus from 1986, Nightfall from 1987, Ancient Dreams from 1988, and Tales of Creation from 1989. I'd also add Chapter 6 from 1992, Candlemass from 2005, King of the Grey Islands from 2007, and Psalms for the Dead from 2012. I'll put Death Magic Doom and The Door to Doom on extra credit. They were a little less compelling for me, but they may rank higher for you. But regardless of which Candlemass albums are your favorites, they're definitely one of the original pioneers of epic doom metal and legends in Swedish heavy metal. Check them out and let me know what your favorite albums are. And an extra big thank you to everyone who joined the Metal Skull Patreon. If you'd like to see your name on the Heavy Metal Honor Roll, or just want to support the channel and take part in voting on upcoming bands, that's the way to do it. I'll leave a link in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed this look back at Candlemass. As always, thanks for watching, and see you next time.